Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to discuss determinants and some of their properties, right? So I, I'm going to assume that all of us have seen determinants at some level, and uh, we have also played with them and used their properties and so on. But so in that sense, it's going to be kind of recall of what we have already seen. But so the idea here is, uh, you know, to collect together a bunch of results which are all related and which can be. Uh, Written, written down very neatly if we use determinants, right? So that's why I'm going to bring in determinants here. So let's just, uh, you know, start with two by two matrices. And so first describe how to compute, you know, a determinant, you know, in a very standard, um, you know, algorithmic way, right? So there are different ways in which one can introduce determinants and uh, you know, come up with the definition of determinant and so on. But so we will not take a formal approach here. So let's, you know, show how to do it for a two by two matrix and a three by three matrix and so on. Right. So two by two matrix is you know A B C D. So we know that the determinant of such a matrix is simply given by A times D minus B times C. Right. So if you look at a three by three by three matrix, the determinant is. Uh, you know, can, can be computed in terms of determinants of other two by two matrices. And so let me also point out that determinant is defined only for a square matrix, right? So a matrix in general need not be square as we have seen examples of non-square matrices. But the notion of a determinant is available only if the mat uh, you know, a matrix is square. So if you have a three by three matrix, so one should start with uh, finding out what is called a cofactor matrix, right? So every element of this matrix is, if it is replaced by its cofactor, then you get the cofactor matrix, right? So how do you compute the cofactor of an element? So let's look at the first element here. So the first row, first column, so that's one. So the way to find its cofactor is to, you know, ignore the row and the column that this particular element represents. So you forget about you know this this row and you also have to forget about this column. So you imagine that this doesn't exist. So then you're left with just this two by two matrix, right? You have to find its determinant. Right? So what is the determinant of this? It's nine into five minus four into six. That's just twenty one. Right? So the cofactor of one is twenty one. Right? So you have to be a bit more careful, right? There is also the sign uh, involved when you are computing the cofactor, right? So, what I just told you is what is called a minor, and then you have to associate, you have to tag along a factor of minus one to the the row plus column, right? So let's look at the second second entry here, two, right? What it's what is its minor? So you have to forget about the this row and this column, and so then you are left with eight times by forty. 40 minus uh, 28, 40 minus 28 is 12, right? So, but I have written minus 12 here. The reason it's a minus 12 here is because the this is the first row and second column. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. So, you have to do minus 1 to the power 3, right? So, the first, uh, you know, element that we considered belongs to the first row and first column. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. So, minus 1 squared gives you a positive sign, right? So you get a minus 12 and minus 15 and so on. So I will allow you to verify that I have done it correctly. So you can find the cofactor matrix of any any square matrix, right? By replacing every element by its cofactor, right? It becomes tedious if you have very large matrices, but this is a prescription which will generalize even to higher dimensions, right? Once you have this cofactor matrix, what you can observe is if you multiply any row of this original matrix, let's look at the first row of this original matrix and the first row of this cofactor matrix. So if you if you take you know one times twenty one plus two times minus twelve plus three times minus fifteen, you're going to get minus forty eight in this case. And likewise, you can check if you do eight times eight plus nine times minus sixteen plus four times eight, that also is going to give you minus forty eight. And so in fact any row with any row corresponding row of the uh, cofactor matrix 
if you, you know, in some sense you're taking like a dot, dot product of this, right? So although you shouldn't be calling it, it's just you have to multiply the corresponding elements and add them up. You can do it with rows or you can do with columns. You'll get the same number, minus 48. So what is this magical number? Well, this, is, this turns out to be the determinant. Right, so there are other ways of thinking about a determinant, but let's not go into this. So this is one one way to compute a determinant, and usually it's uh, it's not uh, you know so by uh, one doesn't usually compute determinants of large n by n matrices by hand unless there are some special properties involved, which you know special symmetries involved in some matrices. Then you can also you know write down the answer for and n by n matrix and then typically you don't use this kind of a brute force technique involving cofactor matrix and so on right but the point is that it's it's useful to know that there is this brute force approach so once you have a definition for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix you can define uh, you know that you can define the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix from which in turn you can define the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix and so on right okay so this is the determinant so i am formally defining it here so in, in general, for an n by n square matrix, the determinant is given by the sum of the product of each element of a row or column. It doesn't matter which row you choose. It doesn't matter which column you choose as long as you take the same column and same row, you know, for the matrix and its cofactor matrix, right? So you have a determinant of A is a summation over J minus I to the I plus J. So this is where this, you know, minor becomes a cofactor when you tag this factor along with it. So, Mij is the minor, Aij times Mij and then so which is equal to written in terms of this cofactor of Aij, right? right. So, this is exactly what we have uh, demonstrated earlier already. So, let us work out, you know, the determinant of this matrix. Um, okay. So, let us work out, you know, the, the determinant of this matrix. So, let me copy this down. I have 0 a minus b well, minus a 0 c minus a 0 c then I have b minus c 0 and we can do it a brute force way. So whenever you have zeros like this it's it makes life even easier right so so the if let me go along this first row, so I have this is equal to 0 minus a times a into 0 will give me just 0 minus bc, then I have minus b times ac minus 0. So what do I have? So this is equal to a b c minus a b c equal to 0 right. So I have worked this out just using brute force method but there may be other ways of doing this using some of some properties of determinants right. So let us look at some properties of determinants and maybe later on you can try to find if there is a quick and direct way to get to this answer that could be your that could be homework but let's look at some properties of determinants so this too is in the nature of recall so if we multiply every element of any row or any column by factor right so the determinant of the matrix is also multiplied by that factor right so um, this is something that you must be familiar with right it doesn't matter whether you do it for a row or for a column and it doesn't matter for which row or which, which column you do the same factor you know can be pulled out or brought in right from the determinant so the determinant of a matrix is zero if every element of some row or column is zero so in fact this is actually a consequence of the first rule right so if every element of some row or column is zero then you can pull out zero right and therefore determinant of this matrix is equal to zero times the determinant of this matrix so which is just zero right so two rows or columns are proportional to each other so if, if two rows or two columns are proportional to each other, then uh, this includes the case of two rows being identical to each other. Whether they are, if they are identical or proportional, it's really 
uh, you know each of them will be will go to zero is is kind of obvious because you can pull out that factor and then there are two columns which are identical so you can work well, and that, that gives you a zero for the determinant right this also follows from the fact that you can add or add a multiple of some row to another column and the determinant, remain, determinant remains unchanged which is a property which is coming up later on so if you exchange two rows it changes the sign of the determinant if you exchange two rows or if you exchange two columns then the determinant of your resulting matrix is going to acquire an a minus sign right if you do it multiple times then it's going to give you you know minus one to the power of so many times if you have done this exchange operation so determinant of a is the same as determinant of a transpose right if you add a multiple of some row or some column to another row or column respectively the determinant remains unchanged right so uh, you know we we saw when we had a when we were doing these row operations right so you could take a row and add it to the multiple of another row and so basically the the information content in the original set of equations and the later set of equations were unchanged right now we have specialized to the case where you have an n by n matrix right and then so the value of the determinant of this in n by n um, um, matrix is unchanged if you do these kind of operations so let's look at some examples of how you know these properties play out so let me so i will allow you to uh, see if you can find you know you know this determinant using some of these properties but let's look at the so called vandermont determinant so you have a determinant of this matrix 1a is 1 let me write it down 1 1 a b c a squared d squared c squared right so we can go ahead and subtract the first row from the second row so this is equal to determinant of if i subtract the second row from the first so i get 0 then i get a minus b then i get a squared minus b squared and likewise i can subtract uh, the third row from the second row so then again i get 0 then b minus c then i have b squared minus c squared so let me leave this row as it is 1 c c squared so then i have so this is equal to so then i see that in the first row there is this common factor a minus b that i can pull out and in the second row i have this common factor b minus c which i can pull out so i have a minus b times b minus c times determinant of 0 1 a plus b and then i have 0 1 b plus c and then i have 1 c and c square so now of course i can just evaluate this determinant going along this uh the first column so then i just have one times this determinant that i have to evaluate so i get a minus b times b minus c times 1 into b plus c minus a plus b which is the same as c minus a right so i have a minus b into b minus c it's a cyclic product into c minus a so this is called a called a vandermont determinant right so i have used some properties of determinants and i have evaluated it you might be able to get to the same result using some other property some other technique which i will encourage you to try and find so let's look at one more example which is a clever use of the properties of determinants and then there is one more example which i will just allow it to be homework right so there is a clever way to find the equation of a plane that passes through three given points so you are given some three points x1 i could have just have written it as x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 and x3 y3 z3 for you know for concreteness i have put values here 0 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so now the point is that you know a plane is completely the, the plane passing through these two points is completely defined because you have given three points now we know from coordinate geometry that 
the equation of a plane will be of the form some constant times x plus some other constant times y plus some other constant times z plus some other constant equal to 0, right. So, if I write down and claiming that this object determinant of this determinant is equal to 0 is the equation of the plane, right. How do we see this, right. So, let us look at expanding this along the first row. So, I have x times determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix plus y times the determinant of another 3 by 3 matrix which is some constant plus z times the determinant of some other matrix which is a constant plus another determinant which is a which is a constant is equal to 0, which is exactly in the form of the equation of a plane, right. So, first of all, it is clear that this is the equation of some plane. Now, how do I show that this is the equation of the plane that we are interested in? So, I just have to show that if I if I plug in in place of x, y, z, if I put in 0, 0, 0, then indeed this equation must hold. That becomes evident because I have 0, 0, 0, 1. If I put it here, then I see that the first row and the second row are identical. If they match, then we have this property of a determinant that whenever any two rows or any two columns are the same, then it is the determinant of such a matrix is 0. Likewise, I see that if I plug in 1, 2, 3 here, this, the you know the values corresponding to the second point, then once again I, I see that the first row and the third row are identical. So, this determinant, determinant is going to be 0 and if I plug in the third point 4, 5, 6 once again, I have I find that the first row and the fourth row are identical therefore the determinant is 0 right. So, in all three the all three points definitely pass through this uh, the plane that we have found and it is the equation of a plane which passes through these three points. So, it must be the equation of the plane that we are interested in. So, that is the argument it is a clever application use of the properties of determinants. So, finally, I have one more example which I will allow you to work out on your own as homework. So, here uh, the idea is, you know, whenever you have these zeros, it is a 4 by 4 matrix, you might think that it is a difficult job to evaluate such a determinant. So, but you just go along this first column, since there are all these zeros, you will have to evaluate, you know, the 3 by 3 matrix, which is, you know, uh, which gives you the core factor corresponding to 1 and then you have to evaluate the other uh, 3 by 3 matrix, uh, the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix and you will be done. You have to take care of the signs properly and then you will find that in fact these 3 by 3 matrices themselves have zeros in one. So, it becomes quite straightforward. To do. You can also try to do it with using some of the properties of the, these determinants, but for this particular problem, it is straightforward enough to just directly use the brute force definition, right. So, this was a short lecture recalling some of the properties of determinants and uh, building the scene for you know our connection to linear algebra and systems of linear equation which we will describe in the next lecture. Thank you.